the general topic of the day today is construction. Uh, it's a bit to remind you that, as all the other days, the project can start from any number of uh, different ways, and it can start from the smallest detail and uh, the, the, the panel there. This, this is a proposal for a, a construction system that can build a city. Uh, this is by the Air Holland, uh, uh, a radical architecture group that was uh, working a lot with prefabrication and inflatable structures kind of ready-made architecture that could be deployed wherever it was needed. Uh, and this is a presentation set for one of their projects, and you'll, you'll see I, I didn't hang it very well, but it's one, two, three, four. But it starts from the this, this notion of the industrializing architecture and how a construction system and the construction detail can then transform itself from units to building to cities. It's, it, it's the idea that you can start from developing a, a, a small construction detail. In Switzerland, there are many examples. Fritz Haller with his small spherical node for furniture that he applied also as a concept to his architecture. Uh, Heinz Eisler that created this language based on, on uh, thin shell structural domes that he that allowed him to make uh, simple drawings like that uh, for for building. Uh, that's a, that's an actual built uh, structure just next to the castle in Bellinzona. Uh, so so right next to the to the lower access to to the castle sits this Migros supermarket, mm -hmm. and you see the simple drawings that he can get away with for designing a building because he already had a team of builders and the construction system refined to to build whatever whatever building was commissioned he mostly built uh, um, large halls that could be supermarkets tennis pavilions uh, swimming pools there's dozens of them around switzerland all of them more or less following the same principles with all of them very very interesting so there's there's this idea that you can start from a highly detailed construction system and then uh, turn it into whichever building you you want and uh, the same detail can be adapted to, to many, many different building types. Uh, at the end of this uh, row of drawings just there, uh, it's uh, Louis Sullivan in his office, uh, Adler and Sullivan. So this is the architect for whom Frank Lloyd Wright worked in the beginning of his career. And it's the beginning of uh, steel uh, for cast iron uh, systems for creating the steel buildings. So there's a, a set of nine plans, uh, sorry, eight plans on facade, but basically they are the same. It creates a standard width for the, the nav of a factory building, and here's a, a piece of paper with the details of the joinery of the, the post and beam system and of the skylights in the patio, and it's with these 10 pieces of paper. Actually, with these two pieces of paper, so what I'm trying to say, with these two pieces of paper, he could build the building. Because there's a construction system that has all the all the all the attachment problems more or less developed, uh, and this is a plan that because of the standard with the 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 detailing is is uh, standardized. So with these two pieces, you can you can advance for the construction phase. So there's a there's this idea that. Uh, you, you can uh, really uh, create a, a, a building language that can be adapted to multiple uh, problems in Ireland, as in Sullivan, as in Eisler, as in. This is Nicholas Grimshaw, one of the one of this generation of high tech architects from from the UK, Foster, Rogers, all of these people that you've heard about. And they're turning on all the layers of of the of the design that make the, the space completely opaque. You don't even really know what this is uh, and why it's, it's designed like that. I think they, they, they deliberately made it also to look absurd. But if they chose a different view and they turned on only the layers of a certain level on, that was a drawing that could be used to to work. Yeah. And if you send the, the, the beam model, then there's 
some compliance uh, architect that will make sure that all the all the right things are inserted all the fire control systems air conditioning uh, water drainage everything is is in its right place and nothing is conflicting because uh, on that project i was talking about we, we had to send the, the the beam model to 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 the fire inspector because there were several code violations for which we had to have exceptions mm -hmm. And he needed to see the the entire system to see, for instance, if the water and the power lines were not too close, mm. uh, because we couldn't have um, uh, breaks in the building that would suppress the progression of a fire. So he, we had to have compensation measures for the for the, the the code violations that we were that we were doing. But uh, this is the, the absurd, and, and this is trying to think in a more logical way when less uh, constraints ah, are, are in order. So this is James Gowan, and he, he is applying color to uh, explain to, this is for publication, but this could also be a, a drawing for the builder, to understand the several building phases or the several building arts that were coming together. So, so blue is steel, red is brick, green is concrete and yellow is wood. So you can uh, adjust the phasing of the, of the construction uh, knowing uh, more or less who is doing what at which phase through a drawing like that. But the fuller, so these are some of the patent applications for building systems that he was uh, preparing uh, throughout his life. Uh, I don't know how many patents he had at, at the end, but uh, many, many uh, patents. So, so this is a framework structure for buildings and the like. So uh, it's a structural system for whatever. And then he, he details structural nodes, how they work together, how the pieces interact. And then he shows application possibilities in building spheres mm -hmm. or in building uh, post structures. So the same building detail can work in a, an infinite number of, of ways. It can be uh, a mass, it can be just uh, the frame. So it's... Uh, working as their own end from, from the detail to its application in different building contexts. In, in, a, in a patent, he, he, he tells the, 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 the story of what he's creating and then he makes the claim for originality of his system, why his system is unique and can be patent. So these are interesting also because he's explaining what in this is yes. absolutely original mm -hmm. and uh, and like any other thing that is that has been patented in the past, and only because of this he can have uh, the the patent granted. Because if it was similar or, or substantially similar to to something that already existed in the market, it could be challenged or it could be denied. So he he outlines what in his principle is is uh, original and should be granted exclusive rights, and then he could market this for. Uh, whatever type of building he wanted. In, in so you, you have again this idea of starting from, from, a, from, a, from a detail and then uh, opening up a, an array of buildings that they can uh, be used to, to develop. This is a patent by Paxton, who was the designer of the Crystal Palace mm -hmm. for the 19, 1851 exhibition. Um, and What's interesting about it is that this is the key pattern for the construction of the building. It's not really about the construction, it's about getting water off a glass roof. Mm. That's the, the innovation is not, the structure was simple. Mm. How to drain it was really mm. complicated. So just, just to con continue more or less, to contrast the logic of the, of, of the two tables, this would be more of a, Projects that don't start from the detail, but then uh, in the in the in the building phase or in the construction document phase, they they go deep into the detailing of the building. Uh, we can start here. There's a couple more drawings there. So Neil showed you yesterday uh, a drawing from from William Butterfield, a 19th century English architect, 
who was an absolute master builder. It's it's the the the, the level of, of knowledge of construction in his in his drawings is quite quite amazing. And there he's together with other good and not so good examples of of um, construction knowledge. This is for an expansion of a, an existing house, and. Uh, this is the existing house that he starts from. Uh, just to give you a, a bit the impression of the scale of it. In grey is the same existing house with the expansion <laughs> and the demolitions that he's doing and with his understanding of the infrastructure natu network that he has to create to modernize uh, late medieval house. Uh, because uh, for, for 19th century standards of comfort, the you had to have a water network servicing the, the house. Uh, and then you have in the wall and in the drawings here several details for some of the special elements that he's creating. The library, the, the, um, the, the winter garden, the, all the, the, the special rooms that were connected with, uh, with the way of living in the, in the 19th century. Uh, um. Two, two things, sorry, to but it's, yeah. they're funny, I think, always about this scheme, which is, the house is very close here, it's a, a, an hour away, um, but he was the, um, um, the head of law in the government, so he was a very senior sort of like, very proud of his knowledge. This was, this is this tiny um, 18th century house, which was very important for him, because in a room here on the top, second, first floor, in the 60, late 1630s, uh, Cromwell and Fairfax, the two key figures in the Civil War in England, had planned the revolution. Mm -hmm. So it, it, at all costs, he wanted to preserve the earlier house within this complex. The library that he built for himself was the largest room in a private house in the south of England, sorry, uh, mm. I think west of Salisbury, the largest room in the Premier Valley. Mm. Anyway, sorry, was that a question? So you see how the, the, the water network services all the, 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 the bathrooms and kitchen spaces and all of the all of the, the new spaces that he's creating around, and then you have details for uh, several of the new additions that he's creating for the house. This is the aviary connected to the, to the library that he extensively details. Plan section uh, and sometimes in the same page, uh, building details of the construction system that is to 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 be used in in building it, and uh, you'll see better in the in the drawings that are in the in the wall, and and this as as Neil told you is signed by the builder, so this is also the building contract. So this had to contain all the information that was needed to, to build the house. Of course, uh, presuming that the client was using one of the builders that was used to work with, with Butterfield that could follow his, uh, his design without having to, to spend too much time uh, designing all the small details of the, of the, of the, of the spaces. But the, the, the interesting thing for me here is also that uh, the, the, the care with which he designs the connections in between the, the old building and the, and the new structures around it. And that's something that you see in the, in the drawings that are on the wall. The bay window, uh, details of the, the brick pattern that was to, to line the side of this to slightly distinguish it from the existing house. This, um, Common language in the in between the, the, the new additions to the house and the, the, the maintain the perception of the historical house that he was adding to. Same for uh, Villa Le Duc in the uh, yeah in the beams that he is designing for an addition to the Chateau de Poupierre. Poupierre. So again, like Butterfield, an, an expansion to 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 a house, uh, and you have a detail of the metal piece that allows to strengthen the wooden beams that that are creating the 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 roof of the of the main hall of the of the space. So you have details of of the roof. You have a detail of the cast iron piece that is bracing 
the wooden elements. You have a, a plan and, a, and sections of this wooden beams that allow him to to create larger scale spaces in the in the hall. And and it's, the contrast here is interesting because uh, you have this this understanding that new building techniques allow for uh, bigger spans, bigger buildings, uh, more interesting proposals. But at the same time, you are in a highly experimental stage. So for someone who has a profound knowledge of construction, you can see the degree of certainty that they can apply to their, to their solutions. To someone who doesn't, you see the, the immense amount of reinforcing that they are trying to, to install that is far beyond what is needed. Yeah. Surely you don't need a strengthening metal piece in every. Uh, I mean, this is a after all. Uh, uh, he's reproducing directly a building type, which is a Roman or Greek temple. So you don't actually. You could have built it with stone. Yeah. Well, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. It's a disaster. This drawing. Yeah. <laughs> But it's the difference Very between someone who is deeply embedded in the construction culture of his time and someone who is just who has just read about the constru a new construction yeah, system. Fair, it's worth perhaps also saying about the Barry drawing for the houses in Holland mm -hmm. that so this is the intermediate generation. This is mm -hmm. the fifties, mm -hmm. and we are now faced in the UK with the prospect of closing the houses of Parliament, mm -hmm. sending the Parliament away to another building for. I don't know, eight years or something, while um, while the, all of these metal elements are removed from the structure and replaced. I can't remember. I can't remember what they said. Now six billion pounds or something mm. to restore this building. So this is a bit the nineteenth century tackling with uh, carrying uh, the, the 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 last remnants of a. Uh, a construction logic and trying to integrate the new uh, discoveries that are coming from, from uh, the building industry that are being widely applied uh, first in infrastructure pieces, bridges or technical buildings, but then make their way into, into all types of buildings and that allow for new, uh, new spaces to be created inside those buildings. Bigger rooms, flatter roofs, because for, for a, a room of this size, 100 years earlier, you would have to create a stone vault to, to cover it. That would imply having much thicker walls, a substantial cost increase in the construction. So this allows for grand rooms in smaller houses. Just by the addition of a small metal piece embracing the, the wooden elements. But this whole piece is about uh, the, the detail of uh, a roof beam. All the, all the drawings that you see here are the details of these pieces mm -hmm. that you see in full scale so that uh, the people who are building it have all, all the necessary information to, mm -hmm. to set up the, the roof of this, of this room. Just to pass to the generations <laughs> later, uh, this is when uh, Building industry became uh, absolutely dominant in, in the in you, know, you had the development of the, the, the curtain wall skyscraper. So you have, so you have the, the notion of the scale of this building. This is an elevation from the upper part of the building by Daniel Burnham. You might know him from the flat iron building in New York. But this is uh, him detailing the the corner of the upper part of a high rise. So there's a whole section of the building coming from the from the the ground, and this is from the there's a, there's yeah 15th floor. So there's 15 more floors below this, and he's uh, you have the the logic of the composition, and then the detail of what is necessary. So only the the top corner is has the, the the full amount of detail from the windows to the stereotomy of the of the roof to the paneling in between the windows to the details of the coordination of the building. So uh, instead of drawing a four meter long drawing with all the 
the all the stories of, of the building he, he picks on what are the key elements in the transition between the the blocks the segments of the building to so that builders know because it, this window would be the same as that as that as that as that so you don't really have to design to the full extent all the elements you just have to design something that represents the the set and from that the builder is has enough information to to go on same as, as the fact that if from from adler and sullivan you if you have a certain amount of details of the construction system you know that the building works through a repetition of the same detail and you get to build the the entire building so what i'm interested in is the section in the curtain the section of the curtain wall yeah. is how in a sense he's still trying to create the illusion of depth. depth. Also highly, highly detailed in the knowledge of the, the amount of weight that you can put in a, in a steel cage structure at this time. So he it's, knew... It's, it's, this is mostly, it's a lot of this is terracotta. Yeah, because you could not That's have, right. uh, yeah, you could not add too much weight, especially on the upper floors without the building collapsing. So, so, so you have a series of inventions to, to allow this to happen, the elevator, of course. Uh, but also the, 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 the structural principles that, that go with it to create this uh, core and uh, shell. But what, what is also beautiful is that the, in general, when, when the drawings by hand, you have to choose. Mm. In the computer, you, sh you do everything. Yeah, you can copy. You can copy. Yeah. But, but the point is that in these kind of drawings, you have to choose. Mm. So there are all the time partial moments. Yeah. And no, and mm -hmm. so it's about yeah. <laughs> the size of the paper, the size of what you want to see, and what you want to show. But also by, by, by choosing to detail only a part of it, you draw the eye to what is important to know. But there's a coronation element, there's a, a NAND module, and then there's a module that is repeated. So if you would design with the same degree of development no, all, the, yeah, you, you wouldn't immediately know that there's something to be seen here, something to be seen mm -hmm. there, and something to be seen there, and the rest is it's already the same. detailed in this section. I'm sure also there was an office manager going, no, yeah. no, no, don't bother to draw yes. that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's very pragmatic. So another generation passes. So this is the detail of the workstation of the Johnson building that you saw. And this is a full-scale column of those mushroom uh, structures of the, um, of the central hall. And then details of the the desk and the chair, and the uh, details of the of the the construction of the. This is this is right. Yes, yeah, from the right. This is so Flamigo. The, yeah. So this is the, oh the the desk for the for the workstation of the the Johnson uh, oh building God, in the right. central hall. So you, you I left the the drawing there so you can see that the central space the one that is top lit from the skylights in here and this is how the the, the desk connects. With, the, the, the desk are, are buildings. Yeah, the desk are small buildings that follow the same, it's the uh, same. strategy as the this whole is building. A building. And then for this you'll have details for the lamps. You have you have details for the uh, ashtrays. Yeah, ashtray, yeah, of course. <laughs> I I began teaching architecture to the first year students with chairs and they don't get it because I think if, <laughs> if you're able to do a chair then it's easy to do a building. The structures, I mean, the structure they have is the same. Point. They have to hold, they have to have construction principles yeah. that are oh, So yes. you can compare with chair stools and benches for a house. Uh, right. Yeah, that's right too. And you are right. That's fixed and mobile furniture. There's a, a bench here, small sofa, large sofa, and a fixed bench in the, in the wall. In the cabinets. And this is for the Usonian house, I think. Oh. It's, it's one of the low budget, uh, very interesting houses, but of which she designed probably 200. Uh, in some ways, the most interesting work. Yeah. He was first approached by a couple who had a very limited budget. They were not sure if he would be able to design them a house. He devised the whole system using plywood, for instance, instead of instead of uh, hardwood. Uh, and using very standardized uh, beams, uh, masonry walls, uh, and, and 
elements that could be prefabricated, so it's the beginning of industrial kitchens too, so we could, uh, he could make the house for that couple uh, in the budget that they had, and out of that he created the whole series of houses that we call Fusonian, uh, and he designed hundreds of them throughout the, the US, some of which are still being built today because the Thalias and Fellowship still sells plant sets. That's the section for the museum in Shani Gardens. No. It's a construction system and a, a lighting system that, that he applies to several designs. Uh, the, for instance, the museum in Tokyo follows more or less the same, the same scheme. The, the Venice Hospital has a similar uh, lighting uh, strategy. The blocks are so, divided in circles. Like precursor this. to the photocopy. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that was more or less like a photograph of, of an existing drawing. This is a wonderful early uh, drawing. It was a drawing that Wright had uh, framed, this is framed when he was trying to get the Imperial Hotel Commission. He, took he had it framed and he took it to Tokyo with him or as a Japanese scroll. So we have oh. the scroll lens. It's rather wonderful. And then more amusing is if you go just outside here, um, there's a concrete fragment on the on the front of the building, which is one of these. This, right. this is this strange building in the center of Chicago uh, called Midway Gardens, which was a kind of pleasure garden. Strange place for concerts and entertaining. It lasted 15 years only, and then it was pulled down in the 30s. But here he's visualizing these towers on this, this structure, which sit at the corners of the building from the street. These are these one-to-one uh, -one drawings that they sent to site. Yeah, mm -hmm. So that's a, the, the proposal of a banking office for, uh, for a rural uh, context uh, with a, a perpetual savings and bank, uh, perpetual savings and loan bank in South Dakota. And it has a, a rural facade and a urban facade, so classical language and uh, the language of a, an agricultural shed meeting together and create and the idea team. is that you deposit your money in the front oh. and you borrow it from the bar <laughs> <laughs> it's a wonderful idea <laughs> these, were, these were to be built in the in the prairie <laughs> at intersections of the roads oh. it's incredible it's a very funny joke and, and this is one of the many, many, uh, they, they work for this um, department store company, Best, and they did uh, about 30 versions of, the, of shop fronts for them. So this is one where there's a ruined brick structure uh, slightly falling apart. There's, uh, th there's many that were built and none that survived that I know of. But they are, they are all plays on the on the facade of the depart of, of the generic department store in suburban America. Uh, they were employed by by the company to kind of create an, a, a different shop front for every for every shop mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. to attract the clients. So so in a way a destination. Yeah, mm -hmm. a feature on the road like uh, like you would read in in Robert Venturi's uh, mm -hmm. books. So this is someone who's in. The same context, working with, in the same cultural framework, and creating a playing with the the, the shop front idea. So if you yeah if you if you, if you take on on Venturi and you read his, his his essay on the deck and the shed and this idea of how signs work for for someone that is driving along the road, um, mm -hmm. this is a, a, an interesting result to to think of. Was the, the engineering. Uh, company was challenging them, saying that the, the geometry of the of the shelves of the opera house was too complex to 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 calculate and to detail. And he produces this demonstration piece to say that they know they are very very simple spherical uh, surfaces, and that you can uh, take them all from the surface of a single sphere and build uh, the. The geometry of the shells, and from this explanation, they could prove to Arup that it was easy to, to, to think of and build, and, and the project went forward. In a way, it's, a, it's not an example where the 
architect worked with the engineer from the beginning, but no. it was much more the architect who designed the form. Yeah. And then since he, he encountered these problems, uh, this is a very still clever and beautiful solution to have all the geometry from the same um, basic geometry cut. And then since those are flipped up, you don't recognize it necessarily, but it's one principle. But it's not structurally an ideal form in that sense. This was a problem. While Isra is the contrary, is an engineer doing the form, and the form is much more something that wants to be in terms of gravity. Yeah. He had all the principles. So this is still a, uh, probably a structure who has a lot of material, a lot of iron yeah. to, to make it work. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not the, yeah. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the problem the that I was complaining uh, was that from the, from the technical drawings that Hudson was sending them, mm -hmm. they could not uh, understand the geometrical principles of the, the shell. So they could not uh, yeah. calculate. There are many versions yeah. over the years, you know. And then that's when this piece appears. Uh, it's spherical. You can, yeah. In 3D, it's quite easy to. Yeah. But the problem was the money, no? They, yeah. they, they collapse. So this is a final drawing of, of a bridge. And these are versions of the landing and the railings of the, of the bridge in several different versions so that you, you have a structural principle for the for the whole bridge and then you have a special piece as it connects to the to the terrain and then you have some exercises for roof structures. Yeah. This is to understand how, how the two structural systems interact, how there's a special piece to the, to connect the the whole structure that you see there with the landings. Mm -hmm. So it's solving these two problems when that is already in its final version is that the this model was the the the, the model that Corbusier produced himself I so to, to understand because in, in Ronchin he he wanted the the building to have a certain mass it's completely false because the interior of this wall is 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 built with a with a steel structure and then it's placed with a slightly thick uh, concrete uh, wall with a rough rendering that you see here in the, in the photograph because he wanted to have these very, very deep uh, walls to, to, to have a certain type of light coming from the, the, the facade of the entrance. So that's the main entrance to the, to the church at the end of the, of the path up the hill. And he wanted to convey to, to his office the, the character of this wall of, of, of thick mass with uh, a strange pattern of different sized holes, each one with a different uh, colored glass window, uh, and this had to be the 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 kind of the the the, the, the greeting uh, card to to who arrives to the um, to the church because that's the, the first image of the church that you encounter from a close distance. You see it up the hill, so from from the the foot of the of the elevation you see the weight of the, the concrete roof above it uh, but as you approach the church that's the, an idea of mass but you cannot just build a two meter thick uh, concrete block so there's a steel structure and there's a concrete facing uh, mm -hmm. around the, the, the structure and, and that's the same principle here he, he had this triangular structure uh, very wide at the base narrower at the top that was supporting the, the, the concrete roof. And then this uh, hollow structure was faced with, uh, with panels that gave it the, the impression of mass that was carved. But he, 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 it, was, it was not uh, possible to build it uh, as he wanted it to be perceived. So he perceived it as a very thick mass, but in reality, it's a hollow, it's a hollow wall. It's not plasterboard, but not so far from it. So he's creating a false impression about the, the, the structure. So, so, the, so the character that the, that the model has is not really the character that the construction has. The construction mm -hmm. is quite... Uh, but also I think it's nice that uh, yeah. it has his own autonomy. Yeah, absolutely. It's like a research, no? Yeah, and it conveys the, the impression that he wants to give to the, to the facade. Even if it's, it's more conceptual hollow, in that sense, something really like that. It's yeah. more, this is a concept, no? Yeah.
Perhaps he was studying which is the minimal size that the light can pass and yeah. I can understand the depth. Yeah. No, the depth of the wall. Sketches so other models. He starts playing with the difference in between the 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 dimension of the openings on the outside and on the inside. So there's a lot of openings and closings and uh, the, the, the there's there's an, always an interesting relation in between the 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 window outside and the window inside and the position at which he puts the glass because it's not not in the inside face not in the outside face but it gets a always a different position in in relation to the section of the, the opening that he's creating and that creates a, a wonderful light effect for the for the for the interior space